Hello everyone, it's Adam here. In this video, we're gonna be installing or replacing a front shock in an R1250 GS Adventure. That's right, shock, not spring. And BMW makes this really hard. And so I'll start with the caveat and say that if you have a blown front shock and BMW dealership has quoted you like three or $400 to replace it, just pay the money. <laughs> just pay the money. Um, it's hard. It's, it's not, it's not hard. It's very involved. And so I'm going to walk you through the kind of the, the steps here. Not quick to point out the shocks, uh, the, the, yeah, the, the bolt is under there. You can't really get to it. The bottom one's fine. You can get to the bottom one. No problem. It's, um, it's right there. It's that bolt right there is your bottom shock bolt, but the top one, <laughs> the top one requires that you remove a whole bunch. Yeah, you can see it right. It's buried. It's in there. It's right there it is, right there. Um, let's review what you have to do. First of all, uh, and yeah, you got to remove the tank. So I this tank is empty. I like rode it till the gas light came on. Uh, you're gonna be. I'm gonna walk you through this like very high level. So you know, feel free to pause or play it at a quarter speed. Uh, from here, you're gonna remove these two. You're gonna remove these two. So 25s, 40s, uh, 30s. Pull this out. Pull this. Uh, you're going to loosen these up but not remove them yet. You're going to unhook these two T25s. You're going to do the T30 here, T25, T25. On the side, T25 right there, T25 here, T25 here, T25, T25, T40, T25. On the front, inside, two more T25s right there. Same on the other side, T25 and T25. Getting the, getting the fun yet? Uh, 25, 40, 25, 25, 25, right there in the middle. 25, 25, and 25. Once you've done all that, you can begin to actually remove all of these plastics, and but you can't remove the tank just yet. Uh, you do not have to remove the top plastics here. These can stay on the bike. I'm gonna remove them for my use because I'm installing a bunch of accessories that require that being out of the, it's nicer to have that out of the way. You don't have to do that, but um, yeah. So like, for example, once it's all removed, you can just grab under here. It's a little bit of a tug and you'll, you'll is there clips under here. Those pop up and then unhook from there, kind of slide that out. And then set this to the side. So now you have the part of the tank is exposed. I would recommend you find like a, a towel and just gently, because this stuff is painted. You don't want to mess it up. But see how we've already, you're halfway there. <laughs> uh, and then you have this one here. Oh, there's also a T25 here and a T25 there. Get those out of the way. Remove these front pieces here. Once you've done that, uh, it's tank time. But, uh, oh, and you have to remove the air box. Because uh, that, that bolt, you can't get to with the air box in the way. So we'll get to that in a minute. But basically, yeah, these two as well, get those, those things out of the way. And then we were gonna go over how do you remove the tank. So um, yeah, just keep removing plastic until I say stop. <laughs> um, one more pro tip I recommend that you all do as you're unscrewing things. Uh, first of all, look at these um, clips and push them all back flush. They will kind of be off a little bit. So push these all back so they are flush all the way plugged in. You'll see up here is another one. Push that back in, push that back in. But then what I'll add is as you remove things, so let's remove this here. And this gets pulled out of the way. Put put that bolt back where you found it. Just give it a couple of turns. Don't go crazy. But putting these bolts back where you found them, uh, it makes your life whole much easier when you're trying to reassemble. Just put the bolts back where you found them. Uh, and then when you go to reassemble, you can, the bolts are ready to go. You won't be wondering, is this the right length for this? Cause they all, not all of them, some of them look very different. Oh, and to get the T30 out, you might have to loosen up your handlebars to get down to that hole. Maybe, maybe not, but I did in mine cause I had the risers on. So something to keep in mind. I did miss one, which is under here. There's another T25 under there. Now in order to get this uh, side piece off, you have another bolt under here. You have one here. Note how this is hooked in. This is kind of connected that way. It's, it's hooked into this guy here. So you'll need to kind of pull back and then around or down and around. Now you have a little uh, pin right there. 
You get this out by grabbing around it and basically pulling it out. Uh, it's a two-handed job. It pulled this out of its hole and then it's, it's captive and it'll basically come out. And then you can drop this out of its place. You'll see also you'll have a, uh, a little bit right there, which is holding this. See this here? Holding that in. Just get a nice little pull like that. And then uh, once that captive, you, know, you can leave this here if you want to, but I prefer to pull that little bit there out to remove the whole thing. It's just easier that way, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay, everything's off. On that side, you have all this unhooked. I put the bolts back in their places. Uh, basically, the tank is almost free. You've also removed the T30 and the T40, so now you have this moving around like that. Uh, I've also unhooked these T25, so this comes right off. You can un unhook these uh, tubes and this cable if you want to, or this electrical cable, this is the fuel sensor, but uh, and this is um, these are breather tubes, but I usually just don't do it. I usually throw the stuff a towel on there. So I remove it up like that. It should be dry and pretty empty. And then I, um, I'm going to practice on my camera angle. Sorry. Put that out of the way and then just put a towel in there to keep the fuel smell from coming up. Now, when you rock this tank backward to remove it, you're going to see, you're going to see, hold on. I just slide this back a little bit to get it off of the rollers that are down here. There are little rollers down here that it hooks into. But you'll see in there, you get a couple of cables. It looks like there's three on this bike, uh, two sensors and one fuel uh, cable or one fuel line. So just remove those. They're all quick disconnects. Just remove those. Once those are done, you can actually take this tank off the bike, put it onto a towel. Now you have this view. So now the fun begins. Uh, this just comes right out. This is just a uh, heat shield. It's already dirty because... A lot of dust collects down there. Don't lose that dust, probably $300. You have your uh, three cables here, one, two, and then your fuel line. Um, ABS pump. You've got some breather hopes for emissions. Um, you're going to grab this guy here, push that in, remove that. Um, behind these um, throttle body uh, cables are plugs that you're going to grab onto and remove. Are they gone on this bike? They're gone this bike. They were on the 1200. Hmm. You're also going to need to remove um, these clamps. And the way you do that is with a special tool. Well, it's not special. I'll link to it below. It's on Amazon. So you've got these uh, pliers, and you can basically grab onto this and remove these like so. Um, you'll also, to get this air box out, you're also going to need to loosen up, go into here. There's a, there's a, a T40 right there that loosens this bracket up, um, to allow you to move this through it. There's also a way to unhook this, but honestly, just loosen this up on both sides, pull that straight through. Um, you'll have to get rid of this hose right here. So just grab this with some pliers of some sort. Things are labeled. I just don't put things back where they're supposed to go. But grab this here. Just move that down. Everything's brand new on this bike, so there's that. Get that out of the way. Basically, just go through this and make sure that nothing is going to catch that air box when you remove it. It's the same. Yeah, those plugs are totally gone on this bike. That's interesting. But you've got um, another level head sensor here for, for the shock. Do not damage that. But you've got some T40s here, a T40 here. And then you're just going to basically, and you also have some wires that are going to be clamped to this fuel box here that are zip tied. Just basically pull it back a little bit, look for any catches, and repeat. Uh, actually, I would recommend you remove the clips at the bottom at the top, because uh, then you can squeeze this nicely and pull it right off the throttle body and this stuff a paper towel in there. So let's do a couple of things and I'll get back to you if I hit any um, 1250 specific sag snags that are new versus the 1200. A couple of quick things. There are actually two bolts. There's one there and then one there for this hanger. And you'll see now it's loose and it can let that travel. You also have another T25 that's holding the uh, air intake to the upper frame there. Uh, I removed these and pushed in and got this up and off the throttle bodies. Um, did those two T40s, did that hose. 
I think we're close. And I also pull this out here. I think we're very close to getting this pulled out. But I'm going to go ahead and do one more thing, which is to remove this upper fairing here. If I remember correctly, there's supposed to be a bit into there and unscrew to get it loose. Right there. That T25 right there will get us to free this. And that's it. It's all it's holding this front thing on. I mean, a lot of things are holding it on because it's all structural, but or it's, it's all it's all built up each other. But that one T25 is all you have to do as your last step to get this guy uh, to pull away. Congrats, now your GSA is an Africa twin. <laughs> uh, I did find another zip tie right here, so you wanna make sure that you replace that zip tie after you're done, that's for the, uh, the fuel level sensor. I think once I do that, I can pull this off, let's just see. Okay. Very careful, because you've got some stuff here that kind of needs to be massaged off. Get this through. As things fall, I usually try to watch them fall to make sure I don't lose them. Uh, these need to come, a, these brackets need to come a little bit looser. These brackets are a little too tight. So grab your Torx 40. And just give that a little bit more space to play. And you know, don't be afraid of unscrewing it completely if you have to. On this one. Okay, I think we're good there. Keep on going back. Good, we're free on that side, we're free on this side. Now we're gonna look at the damage. Oh, we have one more. Shoot, I forgot about one step here. Sorry guys, I led you astray. I should have known better than this. Right there, so the screws fall out. There is a coolant reservoir over here, and it is a T25 that you're gonna use. Where did you go? Um, to get it free. You don't want to spill coolant everywhere. And it is, um, it's just screwed into plastic. It's plastic on plastic. Oh, before you unscrew it, grab a very long zip tie because you're going to take it, grab it, You're gonna screw, are you gonna zip tie it up? I'm done with you for now. You're gonna zip tie it up to the, uh, the frame. Anywhere will do, anywhere will do. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but basically just grab that coolant reservoir and make sure it's zip tied in a way where it won't spill out. And then you're going to take that T25 screw, follow my best practices here, and you're going to screw that back into the airbox body. You don't want to lose it. Just a couple turns. Okay, airbox is free. And if you are anywhere close to 12,000 miles since your last air filter change, go ahead and unscrew these and change that out because you might as well while you're in there. Uh, this is the, oh, and last thing too is you want to take those T40s. That we're down here and put those back into place so you don't lose them. One thing I noticed too while I'm with you is that underneath those T40s were these uh, two plastic washers. So put those back into place too so you don't lose them. And then last thing before we move on is we'll take a couple of microfiber towels or paper towels and stuff those into the throttle bodies, keep dust and dirt going in there. They are closed, but you know, just, just be careful. Uh, I have my fuel cap here. I'm putting this off to the side. Just actually stick that top into the fuel thing there. Let's, uh, let's show you around what we have next. So from here, hey, I found the top of my, uh, my shock bolt. Uh, <laughs> there it is. In all of its glory, all you, had to, all you had to do was take the entire top end of the bike um, apart. 
to do it. <laughs> this looks so stupid. It really, it really is. Um, it's a bitch. It's a, it's, it's not hard. It's like, it's like once you do it once, like 30 minutes to get down to here, um, an hour because I'm doing video shooting too, but, but basically it's half an hour to get down to this point. It's not that hard. It's just complicated and there's a lot of bolts that you might misplace. So just, just, you know, there's a coolant reservoir that I, as I've tied up here to the little carrier there, it's not hard. It's just a lot of work. That's all. So, um, let me walk through the next steps while we're here. So we're going to take a, let's see, this is a 50. T50. Now these are, people use the word permanent Loctite. It's very intense uh, thread locker they use on this because it is a structural element. This is a hard place though, because you really don't have a lot of space to apply heat to this. So my word of advice is going to be the first time you do this, uh, take a breaker bar to it, uh, a really quality Torx bit Make sure it's fully seated. Take a mallet, hammer this into place. Make sure you're really in there. Get on those threads. Turn it a little bit, a couple inches. And if you don't get movement, stop. Don't let those Torx uh, bits in here start to bend. On the bottom, same thing. Same, same, um, same bit size. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you could do this with a wheel on. You can. Uh, totally works. I, you know, if you don't want to put the wheel on, keep the wheel on, um, you can put a jack stand underneath here and then remove that rear, that front wheel. And if we have to do that, we'll do that. But I think I'm going to try to do this without the wheel uh, removal just for uh, this video. But you can see there now. Oh, one last thing too. The ESA system has a bunch of sensors and they get all their data from that little cable right there. It goes back. You'll see it's actually not zip tied here. It runs back to here. And you can just unclip that there. There's another one back there. And then it runs back to, let's see if we can find it here. There's the second one. Pull that out of its little hot shoe. Can I get another hot shoe? Hold on. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but you can see there's the wire that goes to the front of the ESA shock. It's zip tied right there. And then it's hooked into a cable right here. And it looks like it has a little harness right down the front. So you'll need to get your hand in there like this, undo that harness, which isn't that hard. I did it with one hand. I can do it with one hand, I think. But you will need to cut that zip tie. And just a word of warning, you know, use really precise um, snips when you're doing cuts like that. And really look hard before you cut because if you happen to clip one of these cables, you know, when you're doing a cut, it's just bad news bears. You basically ruin the shock at that point. It's a, it's a cable that you can't really replace without buying a new shock. And even though you're going to put it into a box and replacing the shock, you probably don't want to mess it up too badly. So just be careful when you're cutting zip ties. But um, yeah, let's take it. Let's just undo both. And we're going to see. Oh, you know what? Last thing too. Put a jack stand under the bike because I think when you undo that shock, it's going to, it's going to compress. These are dumb uh, forks. And so there's really no pressure in them. And so, yeah, put a, put a jack stand under here, really jack it up good. So I have a friend put some weight on the back of this bike, push down like that, put a jack stand under it and then start removing the uh, front shock. Okay. So uh, just note, this is the top bolt. So you see how this look compared to the bottom bolt, which is there a little bit thicker on the bottom. Both a thread locker, top bolt is a washer. This is all loose on top. Also, I have the, um, the little ESA cable loose. There's a, I'll show you how this looks actually now that it's out of the bike. Let's grab it here. So this goes back to the tail lever. It's facing in this direction and it is sliding from back to front into a, um, a little hook thing. So to get it loose, you just grab a pick and you just push that off the side like that and push it backwards and it will come loose from its spots. Now that's done. We can pull this shock. So I have the bike supported in a couple of ways. I've got a jack stand and under the skid plate there, a little sketchy. I have two safety straps on the handlebars to keep that from dropping down anymore. So it's fully tightened. Uh, the back wheels on the ground because it's so tight in the air and I have a last, 
not really doing much because there's no tension on it. I've got a last jack stand underneath the wheel there. Just three points of contact, basically. And to get this out can be a little hard. So you're going to lift up like this, and you want to try to clear that tail lever. So you got to kind of finagle it a little bit, but, you know, with a little bit of effort and, you know, me, I'm an expert at this, uh, you can get this to clear uh, through that hole there. Uh, it is a little harder to get the, um, the Torotec attractive shock in. That's a challenging part, but another, another zero mile shock ready for when I sell this bike in seven years. So let's grab the Torotec shock. Now I've heard some people say that they can't mount this thing um, in this orientation. They had to mount it upside down, which actually isn't a bad thing because that'll mean you can actually access your high, low compression. Um, um, adjusters, so it's actually kind of nice to put it upside down. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to mount it in the vertical orientation and see if I can get it working. So I'm watching baseball in the background, so the background noise. This is my clearance right here. It's very much minimal on clearing that, so I'm just gonna get a little pry bar, lift up this little bit, a bit to just compress that spring and slide it right into place. I think I can get it into place this way. All right, so just to give you an update on how things go. So what I did was. The Touratech clip doesn't have the yeah. same clip to go under here. So I just uh, put it underneath, underneath it in the same spot and then zip tied it with these two zip ties so it's still there. And the rest of the cable is kind of tucked back in the back of the tail lever. You might be able to see some of it back there, but if you can't, no big deal. I also think that the Touratech's ESA cable is a little thinner, thinner than OEM. So you'll see here, I actually wrap zip ties around the OEM clip. See how like, that kind of can pop out, what well, could pop out? So then when I'm done with this, make sure the slack is enough, I'll tighten this down. I used it on that one and I used it on the very back too. Just a little zip tie back there. Just a little bit to keep it in that little channel. Hard off-road riding, it could pop out at some point and catch on something and then snap and then I've lost ESA and have to send the shock back to a Beamer shop. And I have to do this whole, <laughs> this whole thing again, which I don't want to do. So I've got a zip tie ready to go to that tight, tighten down. The top one is screwed in finger tight. Where are you? They're there, finger tight. The bottom one, the way you do this, because these are dumb forks, there's nothing in them. Uh, what you do is you uh, line up the hole and then you use your fingers, put it underneath here and you just pick up on the tail lever from the bottom, 10, 20 pounds of pressure. Uh, or you can grab this greasy um, hub, axle hub. But uh, basically just grab that lift up until you see them line up and then just get a finger started and then grab your T50 and start to screw in. There, obviously, be very, very sensitive to to um, cross threading. If you're not, if you're not like me, then don't worry about it. But be very sensitive to that. If you get any resistance at all, pull it and try again. Do not cross thread a bolt into this tail lever wishbone because it is expensive. All right, let's uh, continue uh, torquing this stuff down. Okay, so at this point, we're basically done. We are done with the front shock install. As you can see there. I need to tighten that zip tie up, but it is in. You can access that high-low compression from the um, from uh, the front of the bike, so it's not really a problem, honestly. I, I've never had to adjust it after the first time I went out riding and was happy with the results. So uh, now that this is in and you're all plugged in, unfortunately, you really can't test everything and clear codes and do all the stuff until the bike is fully reassembled. So just hope that all these connectors work, I guess. From here, let me turn this volume down. I'm really sorry. I'm just trying to watch some baseball. Um, from here, it's reassembly time. And so what I would recommend you do is start with installing the air box, then the fuel tank, and then just start adding your plastics all the way back the way you found them. And look at every single bolt. Like you might forget to tighten these up, for example that are against the uh, upper frame there. So, you know, to make sure all the carrier bolts are tightened down. Um, yeah, and, and there's a couple things you want to replace. So these bolts recommended to be replaced from the factory. They're expensive, like $12, $15 a piece. Also, it's recommended that you replace those uh, hose clamps that go over the throttle body and the intake. Um, other than that, you're pretty much free to reuse everything else if you want to. And those aren't that expensive, like $2 instead of 15 uh, once you get it all back together, then you're going to GS911 and you're going to go in and do uh, the ESA suspension calibration. I'm not going to show you to rebuild this. The video is already long enough, but and also because I have to now stop and for a few days do wiring for lights that are going to go through here. So I've just got a lot of stuff going on and 
I don't feel like editing 10 days from now to put this bike back together for you. But um, yeah, this is pretty much done. Front and rear suspension is done. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. And um, yeah, and also for USA, you're going to buy your stuff from Ted Porter's Beamer Shop. Give them a call. They'll walk you through what you need. Uh, they're really, really helpful. And if you go to a dealership, it's like three hours, I think, of bench time for a, a front shock install. Maybe it's four hours for front, three for rear. If you don't want to turn your bike into a, um, a hovercraft, you know, maybe, maybe you just pay BMW to do this for you. But, you know, it's, it's fun to do stuff yourself on the bike. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. But this has been a front shock install on an R1250 GS Adventure. Ride safe. Thanks for watching.